It's time for Dart Talk. Brought to you by thedartzone.com. Stay in the zone. Thedartzone.com is an official Cosmo distributor and Windy City Fabricators, America's premier fabricators of orthotics and prosthetics. And Redwood Darts, America's newest tungsten darts. Stand straight and tall and hit them all. Redwood Darts. And now, here are your hosts, Mystery Mark and Steve P. Okay, welcome to Dart Talk. How's it going? Good. We got some new software. I hope uh, I hope it works good. Yeah. What it's else can What else could you hope for? <laughs> I've had quite an afternoon. Steve Penunzielman here with Mystery Mark. Dart Talk brought to you by the Dart Zone. Stay in the zone. The DartZone dot com is an official Cosmo distributor. Also, thanks Windy City Fabricators and Redwood Darts. Yeah. Let's get the disclaimer out of the way. We have to. I grabbed it off an old episode so you won't have to read it. The views and opinions expressed or implied by guests and or hosts on Dart Talk do not prima facie represent the universe of thought of the aforementioned, notwithstanding the permissions and exclusions set forth below. Any enjoinders, rejoinders, litanies, epiphanies, demurers, todders, past or future acts, or facts not presently in evidence, either in or around the underworld, the oversoul, or any other copyrighted fantasy land, candy land, or neutral party to the agreements and understanding set forth in this or any related memoranda will not perish from this show. That right. being said, yeah. we have a lot to get to. You have the list. We have a, we have a new uh, tournament we have to talk about, right? Uh, we do. We we will get to that. Um, we uh, got like a new sponsor for a couple of weeks, the New okay. World Dart Series. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. And um, it's it's kind of interesting. Uh, well, okay. I, I'll I'll just say this for the for the time being. I mean, I have been hammering away at a number of topics since this sure. show started. Right. And one of them is is you know how you know we got to get rid of these like ridiculous short format things and start you know playing for real and you know be careful what you wish for because here's a tournament that is like you know round robin on saturday and you know long format knockout on sunday the round robin's going to be seated by napta which is you know of course i'm all for right and uh and they up the prize money so you're playing for for real money, and it, it's you know it's a for real dart tournament. They're gonna film it. They're gonna stream it live. They've got um, like a host announcer guy, really, who's, All right. who's who's you know in line to do it. And and so, you know, I'm sure it'll have its glitches and and whatnot. But you know, here you here's you, you you've got somebody with it's a, a start, vision. Though. No, you got somebody with a vision yeah. that that is trying to make you know big time darts possible for American players in America. How do you not get behind that? Right. Right? So um, so we'll talk about that, and we'll give people some details uh, later on in the show. We've got results. Yeah. Uh, first of all, we have to tell everybody that uh, we are, next week, we are doing the show on Wednesday. Yes. We will I, be coming right. live on Wednesday, not right. Tuesday. Right. Ne- yeah. Next week, um, instead of Tuesday, uh, we're going to do it Wednesday night just for next week because I'm not going to be back from Atlantic City in time to, you know, get everything Put together. Put anything together. Since it took, I don't know how many hours to do today. Right. I'm not going to be back in Chicago until like 6.30 or something. So there's no way I could even On Tuesday get evening. Oh, yeah. To, yeah. There's no way I'd even get to the studio in time. Right. From Union Station. There's just no way. So next week, uh, circle your calendars. We will 7:30. Be on the 12th. Yeah. On the, on the, just for next week, we're, we're going to be doing it on Wednesday. Same time at 7.30. And as always, you know, you guys can, uh, you know, get the podcast off iTunes, off TuneIn.com, OffStitcher.com, and we have the videos available on YouTube. So if you go on YouTube and search Dart Talk US or search Dart Talk, uh, it should come up. And if you subscribe to the channel, you know, when, when, the, uh, when the video's up there, it'll kind of send you a message saying, hey, there's a new video up right. on the channel, and that'll make it easy for you. And always uh, you can follow us on Twitter. I don't know if I'm going to Twitter much from the from PDC the this weekend. Um, I'm not going to have you there. So it, it it's uh, 
hopefully I'll be too busy to Twitter. Yeah, exactly. But I'll, I'll try to give some people some updates if I can from uh, from Atlantic City. That's starting Friday night, but there's not really anything going on until Saturday. Okay. So if you guys subscribe to us uh, at Dart Talk on Twitter, uh, you can follow stuff like that. Uh, what else do we got? Oh, uh, we, we should probably start out. We've been promising talking about the four majors for a couple weeks. Well, let's tease everybody with what else we've what else got we have. We have uh, we, can look we do to. have the official Dart Talk pra- practice regimen for beginners. The practice regimen for beginners is complete. We defined yes. what a beginner was last Correct. week. Correct. Yeah. And what do we say it was? If you can go around the world. One dart one, in the fat one, of every number. Yeah, without missing. You're no longer a beginner. Okay, yeah. We may have to, uh, I don't. You don't like that definition? We'll have to talk about that. Do you think that's fair? Wait till you see the practice regimen. Yeah, then I might change my mind. Yeah, Yeah. you missed the pre-show meeting. I missed the meeting again. Well, we'll we'll talk about that. About mm, Because if you can get through this practice regimen, I'm looking at it and I'm like, hmm. Then you're no longer a beginner? Yeah. Well, you could look and, and, you know, tell me what you think. Right. All you right, know, we're also uh, going to have a little conversation about why 501 is better than cricket. Yeah, well, that's should be well, a have conversation. Well, yeah, have more I, of a conversation. I, I, We've I, discussed it before. but And, uh, yeah, you know, and, and there's some cricket players that, that uh, gave me a little bit of guff, you know, before the show. And yeah. I'm like, oh, my gosh, are you kidding me? <laughs> so we'll, we'll so that put, made the list. Well, I, I can pretty much anticipate their arguments. And I, I had a long conversation with somebody about this once, and I literally tore every argument of his apart. And by the end of the argument, he just shook his head. He's like, no, nah, you're still wrong. Uh, and I'm like, where did you learn that from? <laughs> I have refuted everything you've said in a logical manner. And it's right. and in front of any jury, I, I win 12 nothing. So Just I, not his jury. Yeah, I, I, well, jury of one. I don't know. <laughs> All right, we got some results from WADA. We got some results from uh, Glenn Silva and MLD as well. Yeah, the Glenn Silva Memorial was in uh, Florida last weekend. Uh, WADA was in... Uh, Somewhere around, uh, it's uh, Sterling, Virginia, I think it was. And then the MLD is from, uh, I don't know where that's from. I think it's somewhere on the East Coast. So we got a bunch of East Coast stuff. Everybody else apparently took the weekend off. Right. I know I did. I practiced. But Holiday weekend and all. And we have to determine what the four majors are for next yes. year. So, uh, gosh. Which I'm sure you have I mean, thought I, on well, that. Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure that, you know, when when I say what the four majors are, there's going to be a bunch of people like screaming and yelling. Well, sure, but but we'll, we'll, well explain you know that's that. going to happen. What were we supposed to start with? Whatever you felt like. What do you, the four what majors. Do you, we were going to start majors? with the four majors since we've been promising it for two weeks. Well, well, here's the okay. The deal with the four majors is is that there are requirements. Right. right, and and we pretty much said that you know I I don't really care if it's W W D F event or not, but it has to be. Let's set the criteria, okay? You have to have at least one long format event, singles event, All right. that's seated, okay? Sure. So this year there were only two. Okay. You had uh, the Virginia Beach Cricket event on Friday, which was seated by. <sighs> what did they seat it by? I don't even remember. But they, it was seeded by something. I don't think they used ADO ranking. Oh, they used the Ben the the Bullseye News uh, pro rankings for the Virginia Beach. Okay, and uh, I think they seeded thirty two people, and then they had the other thirty two people were people that had to qualify. But the Ben pro rankings included Canadians, so it was right. a step up. The year before they had used the ADO rankings, and that was a disaster because you had all these good Canadians coming in unseated. Yeah. And it was funny. I was watching. Uh, I was kind of channel surfing, and they had uh, the U.S. Open women's doubles, and Serena and Venus Williams weren't seeded. And then all the announcers were talking about what a disaster it was to not seed them, but they hadn't been playing because you know one was hurt, then the other was hurt, so they didn't play any doubles events. And they're playing the four seeds, and they got smoked. So uh, did they really? <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm all for seeding, but anybody who thinks that somehow you know seeding is really gonna matter. You, if you look at anything that's seeded, there's all sorts of teams that that are seeded low that win, yeah. or unseeded that win, 
Right. Well, yeah, and eventually, I mean, you got to beat them anyway. It, the only thing it determines is maybe whether you get to the round of 16 or the round of four. Well, what it does is it is it kind of makes sure that the top two, three, or four people don't meet until later in yeah. the tournament. Outside of that, it doesn't really do anything. Right. And and in, in our current state of American darts where, depending on the week, you know, this guy's going to win or that guy's going to win, it, it's kind of like the PGA Tour was before Tiger Woods, where you had no idea who was going to win any given tournament. Well, and it's kind of like have, that now, too. Well, yeah. Well, hmm, it's close to that. <laughs> yeah. Where, you know, a guy has a couple, you know, two, three good weeks in a row, and then, you know, he's back in the pack, and then somebody else has a couple yeah. of good weeks. you got a different winner every week. you got a different guy winning every major for the last, I don't know, 12, for, 14 yeah, majors. So, you know, seeding, uh, I don't see any objection to it. But anyway, when it comes to a major, you know, you have to have... So what was the other one? You said Virginia Beach and... The other one was uh, Nashville. Oh, okay. Nashville's pro singles was uh, seeded by NAPTA, which is superseded the Ben Pro rankings. So it's another, you know, North American, uh, you know, rankings list where, you know, it's, it's got the Canadians in there too. Okay. So... To have four majors is going to be hard unless people get on the bandwagon. And then the other thing I was thinking is that they have to be regionally spread out. You can't have them all on the East yeah. Coast because that's a disadvantage to the West Coast people. So I, I looked through all the West Coast tournaments, and there's one next year. It's uh, in Sacramento, I believe. It's called the Camilla or Camellia or something. I think it's Camilla. The Camilla Classic, which is early in the year. Okay. I think it's like in February or March. And forgive me, I mean, uh, the chat room probably knows. If they would get a seated pro singles event on Friday or have a long format singles that's seated on Saturday, I would say that they would they should be a They major. could qualify? Yeah, it's up to 20,000 now. It's been growing every year. And you have to have something on the West Coast for the people on the West Coast and I don't see any problem with that. Uh, a lot of people were saying, well, Vegas should be seated and Stanford should be seated, and I'm thinking, or uh, should be considered a major, rather. Yeah. And I'm thinking, why, why would Vegas be considered a major? I have no idea. Well, I don't either. I, I mean, I, <laughs> just, because, just because they have a WDF event, there is no reason to make it a major. Right. Just because the Nationals are there are no reason to make it a major. I, I don't think you could have a major in Colorado. All right, so now you got you got... Seated and region. Right. Do you have any other criteria? The prize money has to be substantial. And I'm thinking it's got to be 20000 or more because the, the $15,000 tournaments generally, if they run a lot of events, the, the singles doesn't really pay much. Yeah. So I don't really consider it a major unless there's, like, real prize money. Right. So now you're talking about this, this tournament in Dayton, this New World Dart Series first event is uh, – October twelfth. First prize is forty eight hundred bucks. Yeah. Now you would have to consider that a tournament that has that kind of that kind of prize money. It's a thirty thousand dollar tournament, which makes it the second most profitable or the second biggest purse of the year, second or third. You'd have to consider that. Sure. You know, as as being a major tournament stands to reason. Yeah. Right? The, the difference with, with the, the New World one, though, is that it's going to be round robin on Saturday and they're not going to have all these, all these events. And, and we're going to have to get the players used to it. And, and I, you know, once they do it, uh, they're, they're not going to want to play anything else. Yeah. So all the other tournaments are going to be in trouble. I've been harping on this since I got back from uh, the, La, the Sorrentos in Montreal years ago. I'm like, this is the best tournament format I've ever seen. You get in tons of darts and you don't kill yourself. Right. It's awesome. So um, so that, with that being the criteria, you, Nashville's in the Midwest, and you've got Sacramento's in the West. Yeah. And then what do you have in the East? You have Virginia Beach. Now, all you've got to do is find one more. Somewhere in the South. Well, it would be nice if, if you could find it in the South, but there aren't any 20,000 tournaments in the South. What they do with Charlotte is every other year when they have the Nationals in Charlotte, it's a $20,000 tournament. Well, it needs to be consistently there. Yeah, you there. can't and have Virginia a major every Beach, other year. Well, Virginia's pretty far south. Virginia Beach is, is close okay. to South Carolina. Yeah. Right? So I'm thinking it, it should be in New England. 
It should either be in New York or it should be either close to New York City or close to Boston. Well, what's in between that is Stanford. Well, Stanford had a longer singles this year, and had they seeded it, then I would have to say, well, then, Stanford yeah. would have qualified because the prize money was good. It was under 1000 but they have three really good singles in Stanford. So if you had Stanford and Virginia Beach and Nashville and California, I'm thinking that would be good. That would be good. Right. We'll, we'll have to. We'll, the, the players are. are but you are have a little have bit to, of an if there because of Stanford. Well, because well, no, because actually the biggest prize money of them all is a tournament that hasn't happened yet. Yeah. So that could actually change the paradigm. Right. Which would be great. So you know, as long as we're talking about that, I wrote. Uh, we, we'll do a quick. Uh, we'll do a quick ad for the New World Dart Series, and then uh, we'll go to our first break. You want to take a crack at this, or you want me to do it? Sure, why not? All right, go ahead. Uh, the $30,000 inaugural event of the New World Dart Series begins October 12th at the Marriott Hotel and Convention Center in Dayton, Ohio. The NWDS will be hosted by Howard Cosell's grandson, Colin, streamed live on the Internet and filmed for later broadcast. The Friday evening LOTD will be seated. No two steel or soft tip pros paired together. Saturday features NAPTA seated round robin play, leading to Sunday's long format knockout event where the top prize is $4,800 for the men and 1600 for the women. A perfect game during Sunday's main event will win you a 2013 Dodge Dart. One fee covers your hotel and all your entry fees for the entire weekend. To register via PayPal, go to www.newworlddartseries.com. To register with a credit card, email info at newworlddartseries.com. Use the code TALK in the code section of the Registration page for a free breakfast on Saturday or Sunday at the Marriott Breakfast Buffet or register register in person at the PDC stop in Atlantic City this weekend. Well said. Okay. Uh, We'll take our first break, and we'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. Uh, Dart Talk brought to you by the Dart Zone. Stay in the zone. The DartZone.com is an official Cosmo distributor. Also, thanks to Redwood Darts and Windy City Fabricators. 
So where were we? So, uh, well, we will recap our picks for the four oh, majors. Oh, the four majors. Which we have as Virginia Beach. Virginia Beach. Nashville. Nashville. Sacramento. And uh, Stanford. And with Stanford. With a possible asterisk. With the asterisk. Yeah. Right. So what I'm thinking is if, if, the, uh, if this Dayton tournament comes off, and they can sustain it with the, you know, with the big prize money and the long format and the seating and everything. And one of the majors has to go, of the ones that we listed, uh, would have to be Stanford. I'm thinking Stanford's yeah. got to go. If if the Sacramento tournament isn't going to have a long format seated one, then then they would go. Right. Right. But you know, it, it, if but there's only going to be four, it makes yeah. it easy. You know, what I would like to see is nine tournaments next year do the seated long format stuff. And then, you know, we haven't talked about the PDC tour either because they're supposed to have five stops next year and one's going right. to be in California. Yeah. You can't have nine majors. So, I mean, I'm not quite sure how we're going to work that one. That's going to be interesting. We'll find a way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're here for. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what's next? So, well, uh, I guess we should uh, talk about uh, the uh, – Official pra- practice regiment for uh, for beginners. Okay, uh, I'd like to see it. So since I'm all for that, why don't we uh, before we do that though? Why don't we do uh, some results? You want to do some results? Let's do all the right. water results real quick. You want me to do them or? Yeah, go ahead. Can you read it? All right, the Washington area open uh, from last weekend. Uh, let's get. To, we'll, we'll we'll try to do top four. The the open singles on Friday was five hundred one cricket choice top four. Mark Fair and Kyle Owen, uh, runner-up Joe Huffman, and Brandon Rogers, the winner. No, oh, Brandon been playing good this year. Uh, they had a 501 luck of the draw Friday night. Top four was uh, Scott Frazier Jr. and Chris Linkus, Phil Freed, and John Everett. Way to go, Mad Hatter. Uh, runner-up Scott Frazier Sr. and Doug Watkins. Uh, Doug, I think, goes goes back pretty far. Really? Yeah, I think he's okay. been around a long time. And the winners are Julie uh, Shepley and uh, Matt Chesham. So congrats to them. Uh, Saturday they had a, a youth adult 501, and uh, Jacob uh, Demers and Jason Demers, runner-up to Dominic Punt and uh, Shaggy, Mike Hardy. Shaggy. Okay, so congrats to them. Uh, the ladies' doubles cricket, uh, Betty Cunningham and Debbie Driscoll, Lynn Martin and April Thompson, top four. Jamie Clark and uh, Jennifer Ellert. Second place to Marshall Locke and Marilyn Pop. Congrats. Uh, men's doubles cricket. Joe Huffman and Darren Young, Brandon Rogers, and Alan Matthews, top four. Uh, Runner-up, uh, Tom Sawyer and Robbie Phillips. Uh, to the winners, uh, Larry Butler and Ryan Barnett. Congrats to them. Ladies singles cricket, April Thompson, Laura Jeffrey, top four. Marilyn Pop, second place. Congrats, Betty Cunningham, winning that one. Uh, men's singles cricket, uh, Mike Lagana and Robbie Phillips top four. Toby Simcoe in uh, second place, Larry Butler uh, won that. Special mention to Toby Simcoe, and thanks to Mason for posting it on our Facebook page. Toby Simcoe threw an eight-dart cricket game. Wow. Which I haven't heard of That's anybody awesome. doing in a, in a sanctioned event since I started playing. Yeah, I've heard of some, uh, some 01, nine-dart 01 games. But not, but a, not, an eight. not an eight dart, where right. his seventh dart was a double ball. Yeah. So you don't really need two double bulls, right? So it's a perfect, perfect game. Yeah. Which, had he done it in the uh, the Cricket National Championship in top eight or higher, I think he'd get ten grand. Wow. So congrats to Toby Simcoe. That was a very impressive, uh, very impressive performance. And I'll have to uh, say hi to him in uh, – uh, Atlantic City, I, I think I saw him on the list. There's about 100 people signed up for Atlantic City this weekend, so it's a good turnout. Uh, back to the results. Mi- mixed trips, is that 601 or 501? I can't 601. read that. Oh, 601, okay. Yeah. Chris Linkus, Matthew Thompson, and April Thompson, uh, Laura Vacari, uh, Kyle Gauthier, and Wes Lep- Lippert, top four. Ashley Brand, Chris Pace, and Paul Wilson, second place to uh, Darren Young, Marilyn Pop, and Joe Huffman. Congrats to them. 501 Luck of the Draw on Saturday. Matthew Thompson and Brandon Shores. Matthew Chisholm and Amy O'Neill, top four. Charlie Moore, Jason Tucker, second place to Kyle Gauthier and Scott Groves. Congrats to them. Sorry our printer's broken, so I'm reading right. this without my reading glasses. <laughs> so sorry if I stutter. Uh, Sunday, uh, U Singles 501. Uh, Jacob Demers, second place to Dominic Punt. 
Mixed doubles, 501. Uh, Julie Shepley, Joe Huffman, Scott Groves, Amy O'Neill, top four. Robert Vinson, Stacey Wagner, second place to Doreen Berry and Robbie Phillips. Uh, Lady singles, 501. April Thompson, Marilyn Pop, top four. Betty Cunningham, runner-up to Susanna Kovac, one of my favorites. Congrats to them. Men's 501 singles, uh, Tom Sawyer, Matthew Chisholm, top four. Darren Young, second place to uh, Larry Butler. Swept the singles at WADA again. Good for him. Uh, ladies doubles 501. Amy O'Neill and Canna McClay. Marie McHugh and Gloria Gutierrez, top four. Way to go, Glowbug. Uh, Marsha Locke and Marilyn Pop, second place to Dorothy Spencer and Julia Oberti. That's the ladies doubles 501. Men's doubles 501. Uh, Tom Sawyer, Robbie Phillips, uh, John Brown, Mike Sarandos, top four. Scott Frazier Sr. and Scott Frazier Jr., runners up to Chris Linkus and Matthew Thompson. Good players. Uh, special highlights. Uh, we already did that for Toby. So those are the water results. Congrats to everybody who played. Yeah. Looks like a pretty tough field. Yeah, I'll see. Pretty much what I expected. So what are we doing now? We're doing. The, we would like to discuss the, the official regimen. Dart Talk practice practice regimen for beginners, the which official, you have put together. Which I have put together. So here's the. Before we get to it, let me explain the theory here. All right. Because they're beginners, right? <clears throat> You want to have um, exercises that are short. That okay. don't take a lot of darts because beginners generally don't have stamina. Yeah. And, and while a lot of people ignore stamina as being, you know, part of what makes a good player, you know, the mental as well as the physical stamina, I think if you think back to when you first started, you know, it – you know, it kind of wears you out a little. Sure. Bit. And and you, you can't really play for hours and yeah. hours. you got to kind of build well, up and, to it. Well, you know, plus – there's also an interest level of wanting to play for hours, I would think. At the beginning level, a lot of people don't have that. Well, especially, you know, uh, my impression of beginners is that if the exercises are too hard, it's going to be hard for exactly. them to get into. Yeah. So I came up with eight drills that uh, beginners can start taking one by one by one, and they go from the easiest to the hardest. Okay. So, like, the very first drill is you throw 21 darts – and you have to get them all inside the triple ring. All right. So you throw 21 darts at the bull, and as long as you keep them within the triple ring, you can move on. Yeah. That seems to me to be a pretty big target. Yes. By far. Right? Yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know if you get with the only bigger target is just the dartboard itself. No, but <laughs> it, it, it's one of those things but where... But it makes sense. Yeah, I thought it, it was a good introduction yeah. to a drill for a beginner because it, it's relatively simple but at the same time you know once you get to 17 18 right. 19 20 if you miss the 20th or 21st start you're going to be tearing your hair yeah. out and it'll just kind of give you a little wet your appetite to do it again right. and it, it seems to be very doable and if you can't accomplish this drill then you need to send us a video or call us or send <laughs> us an email to darttalk at gmail.com right. and we'll try to help you out because all of these drills, I'm thinking, if you put a little time and effort in, you'll, you'll, yeah. you'll be able to advance. You're not going to have to hit the board eight hours a day. Right. So that was the first one, is 21 darts inside the triple ring. All right. So it's only like seven that. rounds. You yeah. like that? Okay. Yeah. So now the second drill is four out of 21 darts in the single bowl. What happens if you accomplish that while you're doing 21 darts inside the triple I ring? I think you, you're allowed to move on. Okay. So the right. idea there is, you know... If, right. you, if you're good enough, just just move just on. Just move on. Right. Instead of having to, yeah. Now, now four out of 21 darts is is better than half. It's not that easy it's, for it's a beginner. It's better than one out of six. Right. Well, again, it, it's like, you know, you're trying to advance. Yeah. So this, this may take you, you know, a week or something right. like that, which is fine. Because the next one. Yeah, getting, you're not supposed to just be able to walk up to a dartboard and do all this stuff in a day. Well, yeah. <laughs> you got to work up to being, you know. Right. Darren Young or, you know, Bob Sineve or whoever. Um, okay, so four out of 21 darts in the single bowl. That's number two. Number three is four out of 21 darts in the double 20. And this goes back to what I was saying last week, where beginners have to learn to hit tops yeah. right off the bat. And right. because for almost everybody, unless you're really, really tall, double 20 is, is the furthest away that, to get used to it right yeah, away. Yeah, it's, it's the furthest shot. Yeah. you got to throw, throw the dart the furthest, therefore it's the hardest. Yeah. Right? And then uh, number four 
is four out of 21 darts in the double 16. And I did this for a very particular reason. My philosophy, which should supersede all the other right. philosophies, right? <laughs> My philosophy when it comes to 01 is you have to decide who you're going to marry and then okay. who you're going to cheat with. Right. So if you're going to marry double 20, who is like the really stacked rich woman, <laughs> okay. you cheat on her with double 16, yeah. who is like the girl who's lots of fun. Right, right, but it's a little yeah. bit flighty, yeah. oh, or or reverse it. Either way, whichever way. Right. Every player is gonna. If you put a, uh, you know, imagine you got a gun to your head, one dart in your hand, and you have to hit a double. What double is it going to be? It has to be one of those two doubles. You can't say, well, it's double fifteen. Yeah. Because the mathematics of five hundred one doesn't work to be to have, setting that up. Yeah. Like James Wade goes out of his way to set up double ten. You know, he's on 68, and he goes like, you know, trip 16, double 10. Okay, well, there's a certain symmetry to that because they're both bottom-of-the-board shots, and he's left-handed, so, you know, whatever. But these two doubles, one of them is going to have to be your mate for life. Yeah. So my idea with beginners is right away they have to, they have to learn to be able to hit a double and not be afraid of them. And they have to learn to be able to hit a bullseye and not be afraid of them. I can't believe how many beginners are like, oh, my God, I can't hit a bullseye. Yeah. It's like, well, try throwing at it a few times. <laughs> Pra- You'll practice at it a little bit. If you can't, you know, this idea that beginners get, like that certain numbers get in their head and, well, I can't hit that. Yeah. I can't hit that. Well, right. yeah, you can. Yeah. You know, you I just can't, I can't you know, have no belief. Right. Right. So. Triple right. eighteen. When we start talking about cricket, remind me. Make a note of triple eighteen because there is something to say. Okay. About triple eighteen. So th- those were uh, exercises three four. and four. Right. Four out of twenty-one. That's one out of seven. Yeah. Or no? Well, it's well, actually one, one out, out of five six, something. Yeah. Right. Five point two five. Bit, it's a little bit more than one out of. It's a little bit better than one out of six. Which is what eighteen yeah. percent. Yeah. I, I think that's doable for a beginner. Well, they're, they're going to end up being good beginners. Yeah. By, by the time you're done with these drills, well, you're it's eventually be a doable. Good it's doable yeah. if you're practicing it. That's the whole point. You're not going to just walk up there and in a week and a half be able to hit 11 out of 21 darts in the well fat 20. I don't know. It depends. I mean, it depends on you know what you normally miss by. If you normally miss by three inches, all of these are going to be hard. Yeah. Right. You're going to have to you know tighten it up a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Uh, where are we? Number five. Okay, 11 out of 21 darts in the fat fat 20. 20. So you're going to throw seven rounds at the 20, and you have to get one more than half in there. Two count, one count, two count, two count, one count, two count, one count. I mean, I I think for a beginner. I think that's, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, you're going to have to learn how to hit it. I'm not asking you to hit five tons, Right. right? Just Throw them all Fat in 20s. There. You know, learn to, to learn to hit that line. Yeah. Right? Uh, what's the next one? Six. Yeah. This is torture, but you got to go through it. Yeah, this especially like as a beginner. <laughs> absolutely. Dart boot camp. Yeah. Right. So number <laughs> six for the beginners is four out of 21 darts in the double one. Right. Because inevitably you're going to get there. Well, now you've already thrown four out of 21 in the double 20. Yeah. So it's not that much further away. You're going to have to learn to do it. You're going to have to learn not to be afraid of it, and you're going to have to learn to hit it because inevitably you're getting there. It'll be there, yeah. and you'll be awfully happy. Oh, I've done this before, right? So all of these are supposed to be like you know helping you build confidence because uh, I have a sound bite here. Let me uh, let me cue this really? up because okay. don't forget what we're actually trying to do here. So this is from last week's show. The idea here is to get people that are. They're playing decent enough where they can enjoy playing a game with pretty much anybody. Yeah. That's And, and that's what, you know, I had in mind with these drills. Okay. Is you want to get to a competency level where even if, like, Darren Young walks in the bar, you can play him. Yeah. yeah you, maybe you don't beat him. But, you know, you'll be there. You'll be close. And if, if, you know, a couple of triples go in, you'll be right there. Right. And if you see a double, you'll have hit it before. See, I think a lot of beginners don't do anything like this. They just start playing, yeah. like you said. Right. You started playing for drinks, and you kind of learn as you go, and it's like, okay, that's fine, but 
if you did something like this, and if if the listeners know somebody who wants to get into darts, and you you present them with this, and you say, yeah. here, try this, you know, at home, or you know, work on it. If you're playing league and you get there a half hour early, go through Do one of the some drills. of these, right? Go through one of the drills, right? And by the end of the season, if you can get through them all, you're going to be a decent. You're going to be a decent dart player. You're going to be able to go to tournaments. You're going to be able to go to blind draws and be like, hey, you know, I haven't been playing that long, but I follow the I follow <laughs> I, the official regimen, and I'm not a beginner. Yeah. Right. Right. So that's kind of the idea here. So All let's right. should, get well, on everybody. Should we, uh, should we take a break and then well, we're come not, back we and have, finish? Or well, we have, do you want to finish first? No, let's just finish. All right. Uh, so the number the, seven. Number seven is one round at every cricket number, including the bull, and you have to hit one out of three. Okay. Now, that doesn't right. mean that if you whiff on the 20s and you throw two 19s that you, you successfully completed this. You have to get at least one out of three in every cricket number, and then in your last round, you have to hit a ball. If you whiff at the twenties and hit two nineteens, then then you have not why, passed. Well, the yeah, test. They, but don't they have to hit the twenty first? The idea. Well, that's what I mean. Why would they be throwing a two nineteens if they whiffed, whiffed on the twenty? Well, the idea. Well, Okay, the idea with a drill like this is I would go through it every time, and if I missed the 20, I would say to myself, okay, I'm going to have to do it again, and then go through, go to the 19, go to the 18, go to the oh, 17. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Just because you missed the 20, don't quit. Go through the whole thing, and then if you miss one, you're just going to have to do oh, it again. Oh, all right. See what I'm saying? Yeah. The idea here is consistency. Okay. And I'm not asking for a lot here. Just, just, one in, just get one out of three in. That's all. Just one. Right, but then you got to hit a bull on your last you have start. To. Now you've yeah. you've hit bulls before if you right. followed the regimen, right? So it shouldn't be like that's oh. stressful, right? And you'll that get a sense pressure. of accomplishment when you hit it, and that's the kind of idea here is is that even though these exercises, you know, for somebody like you who's been playing a long time, seem seem really really simple, it's it's not necessarily difficult. well. I mean, you have to think back to a beginner, yeah who doesn't have, you know, a lot of match experience, doesn't have a lot of league experience, has never played in a tournament, how are you going to build these guys up? Right. To so when they're when they're confronted with a match, they're not all like freaking out, freaking out yeah. and then can't hit anything and then they get discouraged. Right. So that was the whole it's idea. It's all confidence. Give yourself some confidence you practice and you know you can hit it then right. when you're in a match you can do it just as well. Right. And then the last thing is the uh the 21 dart around the world. Now and I, I put a note here because I wasn't sure. What, what is a passing score here? Do you actually have to hit all 21 darts? All 21? That, because after looking, after looking at the exercise and everything, I was like, you know what? That might be, that might be kind of hard. You could probably grade it. That's what I was thinking. You know, like, 18 out of 21. 18, 18 out of 20. more like 15. Okay. Well, 18 out of 21 is... Pa- better it's than pretty passing. high 15 percentage. out of 21 could be passing, and then anything below 15 is try, well, try what's again. What's passing is 70%, so 15 would be about right. 70%. 14 out of 21 is 66. So let's say 15. 15. So you have to get 15 out of 21. And around pass. the world. Right. And if you can do that, then you're, you're no longer a beginner. And I don't think that if you just go to the board, do the around the world, and get your 15 – that you can say I'm not a beginner. I think you should actually go through all the eight, thing. All eight. If you right, there's eight. That's fifty six rounds. That's two hundred fifty some darts. Should probably take like an hour and a half. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Well, okay. you don't have to do it all in one day either, if you don't have the time. Well, that's why they're you know, short. Right. That that's why you know we're we're trying to do everything in these small in these small kind of things because I think there's a lot of advantages to having if you want to practice for two hours that you practice like 15 minutes and take a five minute yeah. break, take 15 minutes five minute break, and then work yourself up to 25 minutes in a five minute break because that's how it is in a real match anyway. Even the guys on TV in England. They play five, six legs, and then they walk off stage. Or they stand there and just kind of, like, keep their arm loose yeah. while they run commercials and stuff. So um, I don't think it does any good to, to try to just throw for, like, two hours straight two hours straight yeah. without a break. I, I, don't, I think that 
that well, you at just, some point you're going to get bored. Yeah, yeah, you're just going to lose interest because you're just going to you're in your head. You're just going to be like, well, I just, I'm, I got another hour to throw, and you just go up there and you're not working on anything. You're just throwing darts, and that doesn't that's not that productive. I, I wouldn't think. I concur. I concur. <laughs> Let's do um, real quick. You want to do these? Uh, the, we'll do the Emerald Coast results, and then we'll we'll take another break. This was in Crestview, Florida. Uh, let's see the, uh, top four, uh, Trent Sumner and George Hams top four, uh, runner up Brad Ecken uh, and the winner was Mickey Eldridge, uh, beat Brad, uh, eight, five winner of the consolation, John Monford beat Steve Connor three, one. And for the ladies, um, in the final, uh, Sandy Smith defeated, uh, Kim page eight, five. So we will be, uh, right. we'll be back. Uh, in a second, and uh, you'll just get a picture right now, and we'll be right back. We'll show you a picture of the dart zone layout here. Okay, and a reminder, the $30,000 inaugural event for the New World Dart Series begins October 12th at the Marriott Hotel and Convention Center in lovely Dayton, Ohio. The New World Dart Series will be hosted by Howard Cosell's grandson, Colin, streamed live on the Internet and filmed for later broadcasts. The Friday evening, Luck of the Draw will be seated. Saturday features a nap to seated round-robin play leading to Sunday's long-format knockout event where the top prize uh, for the men is 4800 and for the women, 1600 As a bonus, a perfect game during Sunday's main event will win you a 2013 Dodge Dart. Uh, one fee will cover your hotel and all your entry fees for the entire weekend. To register via PayPal, go to www.newworlddartseries.com. To register with a credit card, email info at newworlddartseries.com. Use the code TALK in the code section of the registration page for a free breakfast on Saturday or Sunday at the Marriott Breakfast Buffet or register in person at the PDC stop in Atlantic City this weekend. Also, um, you guys have to get on this if you haven't already signed up because um, the registration is going to close, I believe, September 17th. I will verify that one. So get on it, and uh, we'll be right back. Okay, and we're back for the uh, second half, brought to you by the Dart Zone. Stay in the zone. The DartZone.com is an official Cosmo distributor. Uh, you ready for this? Well, I don't know. Apparently you have some interesting thoughts on... Uh, interesting thoughts. I mean... Are you, did you have a discussion with somebody that, that basically got you back involved into well, this 501 versus cricket? Well, here... Why 501 is better? Or no, the, is it, was it better or it's how, harder? 
it requires more skill. More skill. That's 501, it. Okay. Or 501 requires more skill. Right. And somebody took issue with me when I said this, and I said, well, look, when you have a cricket tournament in America and the Brits are here, the Brits win. Okay. Because they're better players, because they have more skill. And they have more skill because they play play cricket. It's because they play 501. And as an example, the first time I went to Vegas for the uh, for the Desert Classic, they had the uh, they they'd run four qualifiers. They'd won one in the morning, one in the afternoon, two straight days. And uh, you know, I I don't think I won a match, or I think I, maybe I won one and lost to Eric Claris or something who is out of darts now. He like fell off a ladder and broke his shoulder oh, or okay. elbow or something. Okay, yeah, sad story. The sheriff, he was a Belgian, nice guy. Anyway. What they did the the first year was they had, after the entire event was over, which was like film live and and uh, broadcast live to Europe. Yeah, um, they decided to have a a singles cricket, where all you had to do was sign up. Didn't cost you any money, and they had I don't know a few hundred bucks of the winner, whatever it was. So I'm sitting there watching. Uh, the guys on stage play, I don't know what it was, top four, and I, I was talking to a guy that was on my board that I think the guy who beat me in, like, the last qualifier, this guy Peter Wright, nice guy. Uh, he's been on TV a lot the last couple of years. He's a guy who, like, does, has his wife do his hair all sorts of colors okay. and stuff like that. And he's like, can I ask you a question? I'm like, sure. He's like, so what is the deal with this cricket thing? And I'm like, oh, okay. So I took a napkin and a pen. And was like, well, here's kind of how it works, la di da di da And I spent like five minutes explaining cricket to him. He didn't know how to play. Never played it before in his right. life. And I'm like, well, the object of the game is you've got to get a, at least a three mark on all these numbers and get more points than your opponent. Right. Then you win. He's like, really? Well, how do you point? So I explained to him pointing, and I you know, wrote a little scoreboard on the thing, and I'm like, la di da di da He ended up making top eight. <laughs> the guy I was with was furious with me. He's like, what are you telling him cricket for? I'm like, he's going to play a cricket event. You want the guy to not know what he's doing? He's exactly. like, well, yeah. And I'm like, okay. Is that your deal That's where you're going right. to invent a game that nobody, <laughs> that the guy doesn't know how to play, and then you're going to beat him at it? Yeah, that makes sense. Like Teg War. <laughs> Did you ever see uh, Bang the Drum Slowly with Robert De Niro yeah. and stuff? where they're in the hotel lobby and they're playing tag war. <laughs> and so these starstruck guys will see pro baseball players and want to sit down and play cards with them. Oh, we're playing tag war. And the guy pretends that he knows the game because he wants to be cool. Tag war stands for the exciting game without any rules. <laughs> and they're just making it up as they go along to, you know, kind of rip this guy off. And I'm like, you call yourself a sportsman. Exactly. Right? So, yeah, teach him how to play cricket. I saw Mark Webster lose to uh, – it was Robert Heckman the last time uh, they had cricket in Vegas a couple of years ago. And Webster hit, like, I don't know, like 10 more triples than Heckman did, and Heckman beat him because Webster didn't know what he was doing. Yeah. Okay, that doesn't mean that they don't have skill. That just means they don't play cricket. So there's a no. So my first argument as far as, like, 501 requires more skill is that the Brits win at cricket. All you got to do and is all show they do them is how play to play, fly, right. and they just fly right around. Somebody was telling me Phil Taylor just goes like, you know, just throws nine counts around the board. <laughs> he probably does that for fun. Right. right. <laughs> the second thing is in cricket, you only have to shoot at seven spots yeah. on the board. You just shoot at the seven triples in the or six triples in the bullseye, and you're done. Right. Okay. No need to hit a fat That's it. thirteen. Yeah. No need to hit a double twelve. No need to hit like you know a triple ten. You have to hit anything. Yeah. 501 requires you to master every spot on the board. You have to hit every triple, well, pretty much every triple. You have to hit every double, more or less. At right. one point or another, you know, if you make a mistake, right? Yeah, you're shooting And the you have to hit all the triples. You have to hit triple 15s if you're on 85. Yeah. I go, I, you know what I mean? You have Anything, to hit triple right. 18s. Absolutely. You have to hit triple 17s. You have to hit triple 16s. You have to hit triple 19s. You have to hit triple 20. So you throw at all the cricket triples anyway. Yeah. So, I mean, throwing at a cricket triple is And there's like, more mass skill involved in 501, don't you think? I, I think that's a wash. I think okay. the mass skill is a wash. And, and you know, I, I kid the soft tippers that they don't know how to count, and that's just my kind of inside joke. And <laughs> I'm not really talking about counting numbers. Yeah. But the, the idea, if, if, you, if you're playing soft tip, it will total – 
your darts for you. But you have to stand there and do the subtraction to see how much you're up or down. Okay. So it's not like soft tippers can't do arithmetic because they do it pretty much all the time. They just don't realize it. Whereas the 501 math, you're just subtracting one number from another, which is what you do in, in soft tip cricket. So I think that that's it's a about wash. the same then. The, the skill is involved with intermediate scoring and knowing your finishes. Yeah. Right? Which, so, by right, the way, right. I got... I, let me ask you something. Okay. If and you know, this is kind of an aside, but just just <laughs> a yes or no uh, cuz I it. ran into a mutual friend last night when got into like this ridiculous argument with him. Do you know your numbers in 501? If I say if I ask you, do you know your numbers for the most part? Well, to, I mean, what are you talking about like from 100 well, down? All or, I said was, do you know your numbers? Okay. Because that's what I asked him. Yeah. I w- probably would say Maybe. <laughs> You'd say maybe. He insisted that you did. And I'm like, mm, that's not what he told me. So I, I actually told him that I was going to ask you okay. that. So. Yeah, but there's a, part of the skill of 501 is knowing what to throw at, knowing right. when to throw at it. I would say I have a decent idea, but, I, yeah, I'm not, right. I don't have it down pat by any means. There's always a thought process that I'm wrong. <laughs> well, Okay. I mean, I, I didn't mean to put you on the spot in, in that no, way. I, it just suddenly occurred to me that I was supposed to ask you that. Right. I should have done it online. But, <laughs> but, you know, a lot of the people that think cricket requires more skill, what their argument always is is there's, like, there's all this strategy. Yeah. Now, there's not that much. How much strategy is there? Last dart points. I don't think. <laughs> I, I used to think that. I used to think that, ooh, cricket strategy – because there would be people that played a game and, and a style that I wasn't that familiar with. And I would get confused, and I'd be like, what should I be throwing at? Right. I can see that as being different in cricket. And, and uh, other cricket players will say, well, it's just boring to throw at the trip 20 all day long, which is how they look at 501. Yeah. See, I look at 501 as being you know, way more varied than cricket. Well, is that – I mean – is that where maybe some of the skill for cricket, supposedly skill, comes in? Because you have to adjust. You're not just throwing 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15. You actually have to move around. And but you move around in 501 anyway. So well, that's, just, that's, that's why I – Well, you yeah, don't – that part – 501, you, not necessarily. 501, you can throw nine straight darts at the triple 20. You're not moving around that much. But in, in cricket, you could be throwing – Well. In 501, if you don't miss the 20, it's pretty simple. Yeah. If all you do are throw ton 40s and take out your 81, yeah, that's pretty boring. I would be happy with that. <laughs> well, yes. <yeah, sure. laughs> if all I did in 01 is throw nothing but ton 40s and take out 81s, I'd be living in England right, right. now, and I'd you know, be commuting back to see my girlfriend. <laughs> so um, She might go with I'd you. I'd be all for that. No, but the idea somehow that, you know, cricket strategy is, is part of the skill is, is like watch people play cricket. Follow somebody around for an entire tournament and, and tell me if you saw anything you've never seen before. Okay. You know what I mean? I mean, it, it's like. Well, that's, how's that going to happen for 501? It, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that cricket strategy doesn't really add oh, okay. anything right. as far it's as, not... like, ooh, I have skill because I know cricket strategy. Right. If you hit what you're aiming at, you win. Yeah. Unless the number happens to be close, because what most people do when they play cricket is when in doubt, they just point. Yeah. So if you throw a few extra trip 20s in there, you're still going to win. Where, where's the big, ooh, it takes more skill to do that? I don't I don't see that at all. I think it takes more skill to play 5 Maybe it's... Maybe it's that they they don't want to say it's more skill, but they just don't want to say it's any less think, any well, less of a skill. There are people, and and the, the the one guy that I had the long argument with was saying, you know, well, for for one, cricket's the American game, and I'm like, okay, it's the American game. That doesn't mean it takes more that's, skill. Right, exactly. it just means that that's what we play. Yeah. I mean, let's call right. a spade a spade here. Yeah. Okay. The fact is, is that. All you do is throw at the same spots in cricket, whereas how many finishes in 01 do you have to hit? Anywhere. Three different spots on the board. You need a triple this, a single that, and, and a double, double that. Yeah. 
or a triple this, a double that, a double that, or, you know, and then you have to know if you miss this, you're going to do that. If you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because you don't want to stand there scratching your head for five minutes. I hit a single four, what do I do now? Right. Right. I mean, you have to know. But look at all the different combinations that you have to learn in 01 versus cricket. How many many marks am I down? Four. Uh, I guess I need two triples. Right. Yeah, you might have to know what There's 40, no way you're ever going to convince you might have to me know that what that takes more two skill. Two triples add up to 96 or whatever, just yeah, gee. so you know. Well, I'm down 100 points. How many bullseyes is that? Yeah. Well, I guess I need five <laughs> because four would only give me a tie. Right. I mean, I don't consider that skill. Yeah. The idea that you're just going to you know hit all these triples around the board, you got to do it in 01. Speaking of triples, what's your deal with the triple 18s? The deal with the triple 18s is something that when we start talking for the intermediate players, that is one of the, the problems that beginners and intermediate players have when they play cricket. If you look at a dartboard, everything is symmetrical, what you throw at in a cricket game. right? You've got the 20 is right on top, yeah. and then the, the 19 and the 17 are kind of below it, left and right. And then left and right of those are the 15 and the 16. And then the bullseye's dead center. The thing that's asymmetrical is the 18. I never thought of it that way. Right. And that's why a lot of people are uncomfortable throwing at the 18, the beginners and stuff. And then you have to make a decision. Are you going to move? Right. Instead of standing in one spot. Yeah, if you're going to stand in, wherever you stand for the 20, are you going to move over for the the 18 18 or not? Because it changes the angle that you're throwing at and, and stuff like that. And it's also going to increase the distance depending on where you stand. If you stand on the, on the, on the left side of the Aki, now the 18's further away yeah. than the 20 is. If you stand on the right side, it's actually closer than the 20 is. So the 18 is kind of like a weird little anomaly in cricket. Right. You know, and I guess they figured that, you know, well, we can't throw the 12 in there, so let's just drop it off because we don't want to go all the way down to the 12. And at some point, that's how you played cricket. You went all the way down to the 12, and then at some point they decided we didn't really need to do that or we needed to shorten the game yeah, or, too long. or whatever. You know, I will, give, I will say one thing about cricket that it, it has over 501, but I don't consider it a skill thing. I consider it more of like, well, if you like playing – there's a there. I, I'm sure I've said this on the show before. If you listen to like the the announcers who talk about European football, which we call soccer, yeah, they have interesting ways of describing the action. And if if a guy's playing really well and he's a really good player, like you know one of the really top stars, like Messi, Messi or Ronaldo, right. or, or Maradona, who I thought's the best I've ever seen, um, they'll say that he's really expressing himself. Okay. Right? Because yeah. it, it, there's a certain kind of flair that you could put in the same way guys dunk. Yeah. In, in, in American basketball. You know, you express yourself with your dunks. You can't really express yourself with a jump shot. You can express yourself when you play cricket. You can play, you can play darts like a painter in cricket or like a, a French impressionist. You can do stuff in cricket almost based on your mood and get away with it if if you can hit what you're well, as long as at. you hit everything well no because there's different ways to play yeah right that's the one thing i will say about cricket that is that i enjoy is you have options whereas 501 is just Countdown. pretty much by rote yeah going you know uh, okay well i i got 85 left oh i feel like going for the 19 okay go ahead go for the 19 go for the 19 i mean doesn't really matter yeah but there are there are certain shots you have to make in in O one where let's say you're on, you know let's say you're on one twenty one. Okay. The only person I know that goes for the bull there is Larry Butler. And I asked him about it and he said something like, you know, over time he's taken it out more that way than any other way, so he does it that way. Okay, fine. I mean you you have a couple of options. But when you play cricket, you could do all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Based on, you know, kind of, you know, how you feel like right. playing. Some guys play fast. Some guys play conservative. 
I change it up. You I'll can play yeah. one way this way, another way that way. I mean, I play hypermodern, which we're not going to get into today. But, you know, hypermodern style is uh, like a big extension of, like, this thermonuclear stuff they wrote, like, 20, 25 years ago. And it, it's a much more <laughs> inclusive okay. way of playing. Right. And uh, we'll probably talk about that at some point. That's the cool thing that I see about cricket is is that you you can play it in a different style, yeah. but it doesn't require it gives you more, more options, skill, right. right? More options, but no, not more skill. It, it, it requires less skill by a factor of you, you do the ratio. There's 62 targets that you throw at in 501 in 501, and you can eliminate some of them. Yeah. You never throw at the triple one. Right. I, right. I would so hope not. You could narrow some it people down. do. I've seen some people do at five. At five, they throw at the triple one. Yeah, stay on the same. I, I'm not I'm not saying you're. Yeah, I'm not I, saying well, your pros are doing it. I most, I don't. Most I've pros never aren't seen anybody five. throw at the triple one. I have. I, I've. Well, <laughs> really? They, yeah. They might have hit it. Triple but one, they double really one. Aiming at it? it sure oh, seems well. like it. Is, they are to me. I mean, I've seen people go fat three, double one, and I shake my head like, boy, you're. You're, you're suicidal. That, yeah. You know, I, I don't really see that, but eh, people do it, so, right. you know, whatever. <laughs> I mean, I, I would never do it. I'm a percentage player. Yeah. Right? And and I, I have taken the time to calculate some of them, and I had the Nepet algorithm and all, all that stuff. So let's take uh, – you, you can read this, and we'll take one more break. You want to read this right now? Yeah, you, you can right. read this. Right. Once again, the $30,000 inaugural event of the New World Dart Series begins October 12th at the Marriott Hotel and Convention Center in Dayton, Ohio. The NWDS will be hosted by Howard Cosell's grandson, Colin, streamed live on the Internet and filmed for later broadcast. The Friday evening LOTD will be seated. No two steel or soft tip pros paired together. Saturday features nap to seated round robin play, leading to Sunday's long format knockout event, where the top prize is $4,800 for the men, $1,600 for the women. A perfect game during Sunday's main event will win you a 2013 Dodge Dart. One fee covers your hotel and all your entry fees for the entire weekend. To register via PayPal, go to www.newworlddartseries.com. To register with a credit card, email info at newworlddartseries.com. Use the code TALK in the code section of the registration page for a free breakfast on Saturday or Sunday at the Marriott Breakfast Buffet. Or register in person at the PDC stop in Atlantic City this weekend. Okay, this is Dart Talk brought to you by the Dart Zone. Stay in the zone. TheDartZone.com is an official Cosmo distributor, and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back for the fourth quarter. Yes, we are. Brought to you by the Dart Zone. Stay in the zone. The DartZone.com is an official Cosmo distributor. Also, thanks Redwood Darts and Windy City Fabricators. Um, looking in the chat, there's uh, one point that I want to address. The, uh, the distance that you measure a dartboard is from the bullseye to the Aki. Right. The bullseye needs to be, you know, 5 foot 8 inches from the floor. 
And then the board, the face of the board needs to be seven nine and a quarter. Seven nine and a quarter. It's a. It's actually not a quarter. That's just the how people round it off. I think I figured it out. The because it's based on metric, and I think it's fifteen thirty seconds. Okay, is the closest to the to the metric distance. However, if you stand two feet over to the left and you throw at the 18 you're no longer right seven nine and a quarter that that's kind of what i was getting at and if the bullseye if you measure the hypotenuse which is the distance from the bullseye to the aki which is nine seven and change yeah it's further shooting at tops sure and it's closer shooting, shooting at double three at double three yeah and it, it's a, it's an incremental distance, but it's not the same. So just people need to be aware of that. And that's why if you watch the uh, the Brits on TV, when they're at a double, they move. I don't generally do that. I actually just started doing it a couple of weeks Is ago. Is moving? I like to stay in one spot and shoot, you know, from one spot all the time. It's easier when I practice. But moving gives you an advantage. So I started moving on some of the right-hand doubles. Double ten started moving. I don't know why. For some I reason, I used to move, and I stopped doing it. I don't know why. It, it's weird. I mean, I mean, it, but you need to do it the same way. If you're not going to move, never move. Yeah. You know, if you're going to move, move all the time. Right. Don't don't be this way and that way because I gonna feel hurt. like I'll move on the shot. Yeah, it's going <laughs> to harm your consistency. Yeah. Um, let's do. Uh, we have one more. Uh, one more, one more set of results. What do we got left? Uh, Glenn, Glenn Silva, Silva in. Uh, I think it's in uh, Melbourne, Florida. Or the Glen Silva Memorial Florida Open. Uh, why don't you do this one? All right. Uh, men's singles, 501. Top four, uh, Linford Jonas and Brian Blake. T- uh, second place goes to Don Carrico and uh, Norman Madhu. Norman Madhu. 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 Wins the men's 501 singles. Uh, men's singles cricket, top four, Tim Adams and George Alvarado. Uh, Sheldon Lionel, uh, second place, and Don Carrico. Wins the men's singles cricket. Uh, ladies singles 501. Top four, Chris Kal- Kual- Kualinski. Kualinski. Yeah, it could be a typo. And uh, Michelle Goss. Michelle Gosh. Goss. Uh, Kelly Mears second. Shea Reynolds wins ladies 501 singles. Ladies singles cricket. Top four, Kel- Kelly Mears and Paul Murphy. Uh, Deanna, Wall- Deanna Marsh is second. And Shea Reynolds wins that. Uh, mixed doubles cricket. Top four, Mark Mears. Uh, Lorraine Simon and Pat Hewitt and Laura Jossie. Josie. Josie. Uh, yeah. Kelly Doherty and Brian Doherty second place, and Brian Blake and Shea Reynolds uh, win the mixed doubles cricket. Ladies doubles cricket. Uh, top four: JoJo Stratton, Stephanie Mincy, and Holly Mays, and Robbie. That seems a weird way of writing it. And Robbie Jones. Uh, Deanna Marsh and Kelly Mears, second place. Paul Murphy, Shea Reynolds win ladies doubles cricket. Men's doubles cricket. Top four, Joe Sabrinsky, Keith Switzer, uh, Mike Crosby, and Jim Nolte. Second place, Brian Blake, Dan Naylor. First place goes to Pat Hewitt and George Alvarado. Uh, Mixed doubles, 501. Top four, Chris Sams, Paula Murphy, and Norm Madhu, and Michelle Goss. Uh, Second place, Jen... Grinier. Grinier, I think. Tim Adams. Uh, second, first place goes to Shea Reynolds and Brian Blake. Men's doubles 501, top four, Jim Nolte, Mike Crosby, and uh, Mark Venable and Sheldon Lionel. Second place goes to Rick the Iceman Taylor and Mark Mears. And first place goes to Don Carrico and Brian Doherty. Uh, ladies 501, doubles. Top four, Kelly Mears, Deanna Marsh, and uh, Linda S- Stives and Chris... Kualinski, uh, Meredith McGee and Lorraine Simon second, and Paula Murphy and Shea Reynolds win ladies doubles 501. And then in your youth tournament, top four, this is 13 to 17 year olds, top four, AJ Cherry and Zach Ponder. Uh, second place goes to Jobin Weiss, and first place, Dylan Meatball Anderson. Dylan Meatball Anderson. Okay, and that was uh, for the Glen Silva last weekend in, uh, I think it's in Melbourne, Florida. And we left off the. Uh, Associations. Oh, I think that's what those were. Oh, sorry, okay. yeah. Sorry, we're we're having a hard time with the results. The printer ran out of ink, and I didn't have time to go out and get toner or whatever it is you stick right. in that thing. So 
reading it off of here is kind of like difficult. But we appreciate everybody uh, getting the results to us. Thanks, uh, Jason and was it Roger? Who sent me? Whoever sent me the WADA, thank you very much. That that was very nice. And Swalinski. Swalinski. Okay. Well, it might have been a typo. We have. Um, we would like to say. Well, we would like to mention more names with with the tournament results, and it's possible that in the next month or so we can come up with another way of of doing the results i mean i i had something in mind i it's just like a time constraint for me okay because like this week i'm traveling i'm leaving for detroit tomorrow and i won't be back till tuesday so it's kind of hard to do anything yeah you know show wise so we we do uh we do the best we can but we should set, have some exciting changes for the show coming up you know in the next you know whatever couple weeks yeah, i'm thinking more like okay Two well, or three months. Well, here's the deal. I mean, it used to be that the season was over by now. Yeah. There was very little going on, especially in the Midwest, um, after Stanford. You know, you had, like, cricket qualifiers or whatever, but outside of that, there was nothing going on. Now you've got you got the PDC this weekend right. in Atlantic City where, uh, you know, it looks to me like – Mawson and Cheney are tied for second. Darren's a lock for first, at least for this year. But it's a two-year rolling order of merit, so I'm not sure quite uh, how that's going to work. So everybody still has a chance. I mean, there are people thinking, well, I'm not going to go to Atlantic City. I have no chance. It's like a two-year rolling merit. You know, all you got to do is win one, and you're yeah. right there. Right? Andre Carmen won last week, so, I mean, he's, like, top of the money list with Darren. So, I mean, you know, and John only won one, so John's up there. So you got three guys already duking it out. Yeah. They've only played two events. And they're going to start seeding them now that they're going to have something to seed by. Right. So, you know, you want to get seeded, you better show up and, you know, try to win some money. You know, make top eight, top four, win, you know, whatever. Yeah. Well, so, who's you for next year? Well, yeah, it'll set you up because next right. year they're supposed to have five of them. Yeah. They already announced one's going to be in, like, somewhere in northeastern Canada, like Halifax or something, really? which is apparently really hard to get to. Okay. And one's going to be in Sacramento, which is a long walk from Halifax. So it's good that they're spreading this around to, to the different regions. Yeah. And um, we need to get California going. We really need to get the people running that Sacramento tournament to, to have a long format seated singles to make that a major. Because if they don't do it, I don't know who will. Because the other, that's the only $20,000 tournament in, in California. I don't think San Francisco's a $20,000 tournament. And if they could do that, then maybe they'll start, you know, having one of the nationals out on the West right. Coast. I mean, you know, for, for all the guff I get what would be from the reason Chris they White wouldn't do some a of long these format. other guys. I don't know. I think that there's a, there's a reluctance among the tournament directors who somehow think that if they cut events – and lengthen the format of the singles that they're going to lose people. And I think that's just misguided. Okay. I think what they'll find is that they're going to get people. It's like the whole idea is like, you know, more darts for your money. Yeah. Right? Who not wants to go to a tournament and sit around and not play? That's, you know, why you don't get local participation. Because they don't feel like it's worth it. And they don't even have to travel. Yeah. <laughs> right. So if they don't think it's worth it, why would anybody fly halfway across the country to play? True. Right? I mean, it's, it's common, common sense. Common sense, yeah. So we need to get on the tournament directors, and I'll get on my soapbox every now and then. I've been pretty good. I haven't really railed about formats in quite a while because we, we've we seen positive changes yeah. this year. I mean, they made changes in Stanford. you got this new thing coming up in Dayton. you got, uh, you know, Nashville was, was, you know, even bigger this year, right? They had more people playing. Right. You know, so maybe next year they can make it best of nine instead of best of seven or what have you. I mean... You know, we, we just got to keep building it up, you know. And, you know, uh, I'm convinced if you have a tournament structure that's sound, you'll get more people playing the yeah. tournaments. And that's what everybody have ultimately wants. All the tournament organizers want more participation. Of course. I, I just don't think that they've gone about Figuring out the right it. way to do it. Right. And, and, you know, whatever efforts they're making in their local leagues. Like, if you look at what they do in New York, where you've got guys that are basically coming up to me saying, look, I would rather play these monthly, s semi-monthly weekend shoots than I would play league. Yeah. 
which makes perfect sense to me. I mean, wh- why would you want to play in a league where it, your Tuesday or Wednesday night consists of sitting around for 45 minutes, playing two legs, and sitting around another 45 right. minutes? What is that? Wait, it, you're basically wasting four to five hours of, your, of an evening just to play a minimal amount of darts. And you look at the league structure. Look at what they do in the Super Leagues in, in England and stuff. And it's like, you know, you play like three singles matches and one four-man. And you're done. Well, three singles matches that are all best of seven or best of nine or something, you're getting some darts in. Yeah. You know? If you're not getting darts in, why go? To socialize. Well, but then you can th- socialize, you know, anyway. Just yeah. go out and socialize. Right. You don't really have to take your darts with you. Yeah, <laughs> that's you know, just true. Just saying. <laughs> So just, okay, one last reminder, and, you know, we're, we're, we're going to hit this uh, as often as we can because the deadline is approaching and, and people need to sign up for this. My stake in this tournament is as a player because, you know, the way I look at it is if, if, if this tournament in Dayton succeeds, this New World Dart Series thing, we'll see more tournaments like this. Right. If it doesn't succeed, then people are going to be more reluctant to try a format like this. So I think it's incumbent on everybody to get as much want participation. To succeed. Yeah. We need to get as much participation in this tournament as we can because it's really, in a, a lot of ways, it's the ideal format. Yeah. You know, okay, Friday night, luck of the draw. Oh, so it's seeded. Great. I think it's better to seed the, the, the Friday night draws anyway for locals. Sure. You know, for a local to know that if they come out and play – that they're going to get, like, you know, they're going to learn something. They're going to get a good player. They're going to get a name. They're going to get, like, a Larry Butler. Or they're going to get, like, a Joe Chaney. Or they're going to get, like, a John Parter, who, you know, whoever's there. Right? Yeah. That's incentive to, to go out and play the, the luck of the draw because you, you, you're going to have a chance of winning. Right? Well, sure. So I, I have no problem with them seeding the draw. Right? And I think for the for the – for the pros that go there, it's it's one way to like you know be an ambassador of the game for a couple of rounds. Yeah, you know if you don't win, you don't then have dinner and go to bed, and rest up. For, get get ready for Saturday. Yeah, Saturday, you know these round robins can can take a lot out of you. It's a lot of legs, and um, but it's the perfect warm up to play knockout singles on Sundays. You know, play round robin, get it all, get all the kinks out, get dialed in, and then get to bed early enough where you're rested Sunday morning and you could play your best. Yeah. And then let the chips fall where they may. I mean, I've always, I've been saying this for a year, that this is the perfect tournament format. So, you know, people need to get their uh, butts over to Dayton. And they've got about two weeks to sign up before the hotel closes the uh, the room registrations. That's why there's an urgency to this. Okay. So, um, so just a reminder, the $30,000 inaugural event of the New World Dart Series begins October 12th at the Marriott Hotel and Convention Center in lovely Dayton, Ohio which is south western ohio okay okay uh, i believe you are correct on that right it'll be hosted by howard cosell's grandson colin stream live on the internet and film for later broadcast the idea there that makes it worthy is that you have something that you can actually show to potential sponsors right so you you have to start somewhere so so here's the idea that they're going to bring in a crew to film it and they'll now have something that they can take to networks, that they can take to, uh, you know, whoever. I, I, I would say NBC Universal is the place to go. You could send them a tape and say, look, this is what we put on without your help. Now, if you come in and do it, imagine how much better it's going to be, right? Because, yeah, you know, true. ESPN yeah. screwed it all up. Right. <laughs> So you got a, a seated luck of the draw Friday night. you got round robin play Saturday. And then you've got the long format. Uh, knockout event Sunday where it's 4,800 to the winner and 2,400 to second and, and so on down the line. And for the women, 1,600 for first place is the, by, I got to think it's at least three times higher than any woman's event has paid all year. So uh, for the women, I, I can't imagine them not going. Yeah. I can't imagine a woman skipping this tournament if, if a woman's going to play darts. And the, the yeah, I mean, <laughs> I just don't if you if you go to tournaments why would you not want to go to the tournament that pays the most yeah that would make the Explain most sense that to me right because I, I don't really get I it. mean unless there was an unfortunate scheduling conflict well and that's the thing but I mean other it, than that you do your best to go to the, that that tournament that's what's killed me all season is, is is you know stuff was announced late 
after I'd already made plans for stuff. So it's it's kind of like oh my, you can't go to every single yeah. tournament. So outside of that, though, I, I don't understand why anybody's going to miss it. It's in a decent location. It's kind of in the middle. Yeah, you know they they have an airport. I don't know if they have Amtrak, but they have roads. <laughs> they're paved roads. <laughs> There, are, there, are, there are freeways that go to Dayton, and and you know, a perfect game, the main which event, is nice. And you win a yeah. car. I think that's right. pretty cool. It's like hole in one insurance, exactly. You know, perfect game, and let me tell you, guys, throwing perfect game last week, right? So you know, and it, it's not one of the guys whose names we're normally reading every week. Toby Simcoe. I, I don't know. I don't think he travels much because I, I don't recall saying his name much this year. Must be no, neither Coast, do I. Must be an East Coast guy. But there you go. Uh, one fee covers your hotel and all your entry fees for the entire weekend. That's very convenient, I think. Apparently so no Amtrak to, to Dayton. Uh, whatever. <laughs> I'm sure you could take that mega bus for a dollar. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it, it may take you 11 weeks, that. you know, but uh, Might crash. I'm sure you can get there. Call me if you need a ride. Um, <laughs> the one fee covering your hotel and entry fees, uh, I just don't see why more tournaments just don't do that. You know, this whole sign up for this event, sign up for this yeah. event, sign up for this event. It, 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 you, you end up sound, it, it's silly. Right. How many times you won't write my name down? One fee, I'm in. Yeah. I actually, in Stanford, they made me write it over and said, I can't read your writing. And I'm like, <laughs> you mispronounced my name anyway. What, yeah, what, what difference, difference does it make? make? <laughs> yeah, you know, and this woman's like, no, do it over. And I was just like, it was like being back in second grade arguing with Sister Mary Louise. And I was like, oh my God, here comes the ruler. I better do it. Um, so to register for the New World Dart Series, you can go to their website. It's www.newworlddartseries.com. There's a register link there that will take you where you could pay on uh, – use PayPal, fill out the registration form. If you want to use, like, Visa or MasterCard, uh, send an email, info at newworlddartseries.com. Use the code TALK in the code section of the registration page for a free breakfast on Saturday or Sunday at the Marriott Breakfast Buffet. And then they're taking, they're going to be taking signups in Atlantic City this weekend. So you guys, uh, you people who live in New York, better get over to Atlantic City at least for Friday night and play in the draw. You're going to have a hundred of the best players in North America. Right. Um, ought to be a pretty good draw. You guys, I know you New Yorkers like to play. You like to play darts and you like to talk some smack. So get over to Atlantic <laughs> City on Friday night. And, uh, yeah, sign up for the Dayton tournament. You guys can get the Dayton. It's not – I drove to Virginia not Beach. I have no sympathy for anybody yeah. who says it's too far. I mean, you just, right. just yeah, leave that out. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not listening anyway. Uh, do you got anything else? No, I don't think so. I think we covered a lot today. We covered a lot. I feel like do we've Do we have anything to promise for next week? Just that we're going to be on Wednesday. Okay, that's and, correct. Uh, I'm going to try. I'm going to try to do some interviews with some people that we don't normally hear from uh, when I'm in Atlantic City. So hopefully we'll get some some people on tape. Okay, and we'll be able to, uh, you know, put them on the show. And then we're gonna. I'm working on a way to get uh, people just pick up your phone and call in the show. <clears throat> All right. But I haven't and I we, haven't worked that one yeah. out yet, but but hopefully we'll be able to do that pretty soon, and that'll that'll make it kind of more fun for you guys to punk me. Right, <laughs> right. There you go. Um, any issues with the with the cricket five hundred one discussion? If if you want to weigh in on that, just send an email to darttalk at gmail dot com or go to our Facebook page. Just uh, go on Facebook, log in, type in dart talk two words. We got a little page there. If you haven't liked us, go ahead and like us. Right. And, and you could drop comments and stuff in there. No ads, but every, everything else is good. And um, I don't know, got anything else? Let's just wrap it up. What do you think? Oh, I think that's it. Just okay. uh, remember, next Wednesday. Yeah, we'll be back uh, next Wednesday, 730 Central. And uh, for Mystery Mark, Steve Pronunciation, we're going to sign off, and we will dart talk to you next week. Thanks Everybody for listening. Take care.